Hi everyone, my name is Tanguy Mego, I'm a postdoc at Britney Montreal and today I'll talk about solving PD constraint optimization problems using Julius Mos optimizer tools. And in particular I will highlight a new package called pdnlpmodel.jl which is a Julia implementation for the modelization of nonlinear optimization problem with a discretized partial differential equations in the constraints. Uh, before moving forward and giving all the details, let me also thank my collaborators on this. Dominique Orban at Polytechnique Montreal and Abel Sikara at the Netherlands eScience Center. And uh, definitely I will advise you to check out Dominique's talk at this JuliaCon 2022 as he will present the Julia Smooth Optimizers organization and um, you'll get a broader view on what we do there. Awesome. So let's get started. Um, what I'm generally interested in is uh, algorithms for nonlinear optimization. So typically we'll get uh, a known variables x, we'll get a cost function to be optimized and you'll get constraints, okay, um, either as the form of inequalities or as an equation for instance, okay. And our goal there is to compute local minima or stationary points with algorithms using derivatives as I believe it's a good trade-off between optimality guarantee and um, numerical efficiency. Okay, so, now do you know the common ground between uh, weather prediction, spacecraft trajectories, and the heat diffusion in your room? Well, they are all modeled with differential equation, okay? So, a partial differential equation, it's an equation where the unknown, y here, it's, uh, it's also a function, defined over some domain, uh, omega that can be a 1D, 2D, or 3D domains, and this equation also depends on the partial derivatives of uh, our unknown function. Okay. With the name partial differential equation. And if we want to go into more complex models, we'll get a uh, different kind of unknowns. Uh, and here I noted two in blue, u and c, where u will be uh, another function, another unknown function that I will call a control function. And C would be a vector of unknowns uh, that, are can, that we can, for instance, call hyperparameter. Okay. And so the next step, if we want to get in some more complex model, is to optimize over this partial differential equation. So on top of our PDE, we'll get some cost function um, to be optimized okay. for our three uh, variables, unknown variables. Okay. So a typical example here of a cost function is, let's say we want to find C and U such that the solution of the PDY matches some um, data measurements, okay? So that's typically the case when you want to find some of the parameters of your uh, model, of your PD. Okay, and so the challenge is uh, to design codes for modeling and solving this type of optimization problems. Awesome, so another simple problem that I will use uh, throughout this presentation is the control problem of a 2D Poisson-Boltzmann equation. So uh, in this example, I have two unknowns, the, the solution of the PDY and the control function U. Um, since we are dealing with uh, functions, here it's uh, classical that the cost function will involve integrals. Okay, and here I want uh, y to be as close as possible to some target function yd, and um, and I will also add another term so that uh, the control function is in some sense as small as possible. Okay, and then in your con in the constraints you'll get uh, the Poisson-Boltzmann equation, which is a nonlinear PD define over some domain omega which will be a square minus one one and uh, as usual for a differential equation you have uh, conditions on the boundary of the domain here it's called con Dirichlet conditions where we will impose that uh, y must be equal to zero at the boundary of the domain okay so a relatively simple example and then uh, how do we do uh, how do we proceed well the idea is very simple 
uh, what we want to do is uh, discretize everything. So we want to discretize the domain, then we want to uh, discretize the integral, uh, the derivatives, and our unknown functions. So that at the end of the day, we get a very large nonlinear continuous optimization problem. But these problems will also have uh, some structure that helps uh, solving. Okay, so actually the challenge here is uh, to compute the discretization and uh, have the possibility to evaluate the derivatives of the resulting functions. Okay, and for PDs there are a couple of existing ways in the literature. I will focus here on finite element methods, but there are other ways. Uh, here I'm trying to make a small list with uh, connected Julia packages I believe the most classical ones are finite difference methods uh, and finite volume methods, <coughs> but also very useful uh, spectral methods and physics-informed uh, neural networks. Okay. So I won't provide any uh, details on what uh, finite elements methods are actually, but <coughs> I will give a couple of uh, benefits of this approach. Um, as I believe, it's a must for generic formulation, so keep in mind that here we are designing a package for um, generic PD. We are not targeting any specific uh, PD. And then, uh, really, it's um, standard to use finite elements there. Um, so a couple of benefits. First, you can very easily refine your approximation. So you can increase the precision of uh, the resulting solution very easily. You can straightforwardly um, combine different kinds of approximation function on one uh, equation and also you can very easily handle um, irregular geometries or curved uh, domains uh, in a natural way. Okay. So the only drawback of this is that um, the theory is much more difficult uh, which probably explains the scarcity of uh, implementation of these approaches. Also, um, there exist a couple of uh, packages in Julia for this. The main ones are uh, phoenix.gl, uh, ferrit, finely tools, Julia FEM, and gridup.gl. And in particular, I will focus on the last one, uh, gridup.gl, for a couple of reasons. Uh, in particular, um, it's exclusively written in Julia. Uh, it already supports a variety of different model discretizations and meshing possibilities. Um, it also has a very expressive API, which makes it uh, very easy to use. And its syntax is almost one-to-one -to, -one to the mathematical notation, which is, I believe, something we all love about Julia. And so it's totally in the spirit. Um, great, and so here it is. Um, essentially, in a dozen lines of code, uh, you can define uh, your domain and uh, your PG. So, Using grid up functions, uh, you can define here our square minus one one for our Poisson Boltzmann uh, equation. Since the unknowns are um, functions, you have to define functional spaces uh, as well. So that's probably the hardest part uh, of it, but manageable. I will probably refer to the grid up's documentation for this part. And then you provide the different parameter for the numerical integration and uh, very simply define the PD operator. Okay. And then the next step is uh, to define the cost function. Um, and uh, again, so it's very similar. And then that's where uh, PD NLP models come into play. So this package exports the function grid up PD NLP model. So you feed this function with everything you defined, and then it returns an object, which is an instance of an abstract NLP model, meaning this object implements uh, the NLP model API. And what is that? Uh, the NLP model API, API is defined in a package called NLP model.gl, and it's actually one of the core package of Julia Smooth Optimizers which uh, provides a standardized API for general nonlinear continuous optimization models. Okay, so models of these forms, as I presented earlier, where you want to minimize some cost function and you get constraints, bound constraints probably. Okay, and um, 
So the API defines a set of uh, functions to do everything you really want to do about this problem, meaning access the objective, the constraint functions, and also in place and out of place evaluation of the gradient, the constraint, the Jacobian of the constraint, and the Hessian matrices of all that. Okay. And what's great is that you can either access uh, these matrices um, either in sparse format, in CO format, or um, as operator if you only use a matrix vector product. Awesome. Um, and then to get a slight overview of uh, the Julius Moose Optimizer's organization. So as I said, the core package is nlpmodel.gl, which defined the NLP model API. Um, and in this organization, there are actually a couple of packages that implement this API for certain applications. Um, obviously, pdnlpmodel.gl is one, but uh, there are others. I will just mention another one. Uh, ADNLPModel.gl, which uses um, automatic differentiation, for instance, uh, to define the API. And then once you get the model, uh, we have a bunch of solvers, uh, wrappers, to existing solvers, uh, IPOPT, Nitro, uh, for instance. So that would take an, inst an instance of abstract NLP model as input and will solve the problem. Okay. And we also have a pure Julia implementation of new solvers um, that I will uh, mention in the, in the next slide, uh, I believe. So essentially it's the dream actually for implementing new solvers as you have tools for everything, uh, starting from solving sub problems, uh, linear algebra um, functions, packages, and you also have tools for comparing solvers, like Solver Benchmark, for instance. And you have a test set of optimization problem, uh, as in optimization problems, the gel, uh, for instance, as well. Awesome. And then that's the beauty of it, actually. So the package pdnlpmodel.gl, it offers an interface between generic PD constraint optimization problems and cutting-edge optimization solvers, as the solvers are actually independent of the origin of the model. So you can use any solvers that takes an abstract NLP model as an input. Okay, so as I mentioned before, we have wrappers to um, existing solvers, such as Nitro, IPOPT, Algencan, and also um, you can use uh, pure Julia implementation, to mention three of them, uh, you get Percival, DCI solver and the newborn uh, Fletcher penalty NLP solver. Okay. Or basically any solver that takes an abstract NLP model as input. Um, awesome. So essentially that's uh, that's it. So let's uh, let's get into some more details um, into these uh, tutorials that is available on the documentation of the package pdnlpmodel.gl and you will recognize uh, our 2D Poisson-Boltzmann uh, equation, our control of this equation. Where So here I had to choose uh, some target function yd and here yd will be a um, piecewise constant so uh, essentially it will be 5 everywhere and 10 in some square at the top right of the domain. Okay. And uh, so it is very close to what I showed before. So within a dozen of lines, you can define everything. So as I said, the model, the different functional spaces, the machinery for the numerical integration, and then the various function, the objective function, and the PD operator. And then you give everything to um, Grida PD NLP model, and it defines uh, the NLP, the instance, of um, abstract NLP model I talked uh, about before, okay? And so here in this tutorial using NLP model IP opt, uh, in one line, essentially, we can solve the problem, okay? And then, um, so all these GSO compliance solvers, they all take the same input and they all, all return the same output as well. It's uh, this object stat will be a generic execution stat. 
that contains all the informations related to the solution of the uh, of the problem. Okay, so typically you'll get the solution in there. You'll get the stat, the final status, and maybe values for the residual, the elapsed time, and so on and so forth. Okay. And here uh, I will convert the resulting vector as a function, as a grid app function using fe function, and uh, write it in a VTK file. Okay. And so this VTK file then can be uh, read by um, by any uh, visualization software uh, that are classical for PD. Here I will be using Paraview, and we can see the um, solution of our PDE Y um, that gets all the uh, specific all the specifics that we wanted. So remember that there was some boundary conditions. Um, so that Y must be equal to zero at the boundary, which is the case here. And then we can see the impact of the target function as Y is significantly higher uh, on the top right of the domain. Okay, and we can also visualize U, the control function that uh, adapts to uh, to the to the equation. Okay, awesome. So as you can see, I believe it's uh, extremely simple. Only a few lines of code uh, for this, and um, so as I mentioned before, you can use. Um, any solver essentially that takes an abstract NLP model. And in this uh, second tutorial, uh, I will be using um, something else than IPOPT. So the problem is uh, slightly different. It's no longer a Poisson-Boltzmann equation, but just a Poisson equation. So only the nonlinear term disappeared from this uh, equation here. And uh, again, so using grid app and PDNLP model, uh, you, d you can define the domain, so it's the same domain here. Um, we defined the uh, functional spaces here and uh, the different operators, okay? And then feed everything to the function grid up PD NLP model that will create the instance of uh, NLP model, okay? And then it behaves as any of the NLP model. So for instance, we can access the number of variables, number of constraints of this, and here, um, even so, this example it's uh, quite quite simple. The problem is already getting uh, large, uh, with about fifty thousand variables and forty thousand constraints. So, as I mentioned before, this type of problems they are becoming extremely large, uh, extremely fast. Okay. And in this tutorial, I will go uh, slightly faster. Um, I'm showing, for instance, how to uh, easily find a feasible point for the problem that typically helps uh, the resolution of the problem. Um, and uh, we solve the problem either using IP opt, so as we did before here, um, and um, with another solver, that's what I want to show you here. I'm using DCI solver, for instance, which uh, exports the function DCI. So this package implements the dynamic control of infeasibility method. Um, and again, it's a one-liner. Uh, yeah, slightly more here because I'm removing the logs uh, to stay concise. But I invite you to to test it as it is uh, very informative. And then then uh, everything is uh, stored in this stat DCI, in this generic execution stat object, and where you can explore um, all the details. So for instance, you can access the counters, meaning uh, you can see how many times the different functions have been evaluated. So here we can see that the objective function has been evaluated five times, the gradient five times, the constraint function five times, uh, the Hessian matrix has been computed three times, for instance, and so on and so forth, okay. And it did a bunch of um, Jacobian vector projects, uh, probably to solve, to solve the PDE. And uh, we can, for instance, compare the time, and we see here that this year actually did an amazing job uh, with uh, a solution computed 50 times faster than IPOT on this specific example. And 
we can compare here on similar, very similar residual. Here we get the primal residual and the dual residual. Um, awesome. So I, I think uh, we can see that it's it's quite simple to use. Uh, I hope you'll be convinced by that. Uh, and essentially that's it. Um, so we get the whole the whole package to solve PD constrained optimization problems. So the main the main one to sum up the main one was pdnlpmodel.gl which uh, allows you to model the optimization problem and it will pre-process it as a very large uh, continuous optimization problem using uh, gridapp.gl. And then, um, then this will return an instance of an abstract NLP model and you can use any of the solvers compatible with the with JSO, okay, with Gilliasmus optimizers. And uh, I will highlight three of them that I really love, um, that are coded in uh, Julia, uh, DCI Solver, Fletcher Penalty NLP Solver, and Perceiver. Okay. And uh, if you want uh, more uh, examples, for instance, on my repo, you can find um, one called PD Optimization Problems that contains a list of uh, problems implemented with, uh, with PD NLP model .jl. Awesome. Um, so that's almost it for me. Um, if you are interested, if you want to get involved, uh, helps are always uh, very welcome. So if you are interested to help, um, I'm really uh, planning to use uh, different discretization packages than GridApp.gl for the sake of uh, comparing and adapting to different situations. Um, I'm also always trying to improve and update the code, in particular update to the most uh, recent version of uh, gridapp.jl and, um, and then use it. Then uh, model new problem, improve the solvers, and so on and so forth. So thank you all um, for attending this, this talk and I hope you'll enjoy the rest of this JuliaCon 2022. Bye.